Hey guys, welcome to Ready to Scale. I'm Ellie Perlman, your host, broadcasting from sunny California. When I'm not behind the mic, I buy multifamily properties with passive investors who partner with me on all my deals. If you're thinking about investing passively in real estate and you want to learn how to evaluate a deal, I created a free guide that walks you through the top five critical deal components that any passive investor must examine. You can find it on my website, elliperlman.com. All right. So my guest today is Travis Smith. He's the founder and CEO of TribeVest, an online platform where people can assemble their tribe, align, form, and operate their own investor group. And that sounds really interesting. So Travis started his career with Morgan Stanley, and today he's a partner in several investor groups that he called tribes that invest in single family homes, multifamily, and commercial real estate. His favorite investor group is the one that enabled him to own vacation homes and even a racehorse with his brothers. I would like to welcome Travis to the show. Hey, Travis, how are you doing today? Ellie, fantastic. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Travis, can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how you found yourself involved in TribeVest? How did you start the company? Thanks. Absolutely. So, um, I graduated college in finance and was recruited by Morgan Stanley, trained in New York City, and had these dreams of, of building wealth for myself through uh, Wall Street and traditional stocks and bonds, as well as being an advisor to others and helping others reach their uh, true wealth potential. But it didn't take me long to realize that that's not the right industry to be in. And I found myself selling more investment products and mutual funds than I did actually helping people reach their financial dreams and, and find financial freedom and security. Um, so I often say I was saved by software and I went to work for a startup and uh, never looked back. And um, over the years, been working in FinTech, which is financial tech services and using my background there. And, um, and eventually, um, actually three or four years ago, launched TribeVest, that is an online uh, collaboration and banking platform designed for real estate investor groups. So what does it mean exactly? And maybe that's a good kind of um, segue to talk about asset. When someone goes to TribeVest, what kind of asset classes are the tribes investing in? Before we get you know, to talk about you know, how the tribes are kind of formed and who's leading them, but what are the tribes even buying? It could be anything, but about 85% of our tribes are in residential real estate. So buying single family, multifamily, um, being passive investors in syndicates or other real estate investment products out there. Um, and then, you know, we do have real estate uh, investor tribes that are, are participating in commercial and mixed use uh, real estate as well, but it really runs the gamut. But the big, big one is probably single family, multifamily, and then participating as a passive investor in syndicates. And then there's about 15% of our tribes that are, are doing other private investments. And the whole idea of tribe investing, of course, Ellie, is that, you know, you can, as a tribe, you can do more. These people are investing in things that they wouldn't or couldn't on their own. And so there's always a threshold to get into a private investment of, of capital, know-how, network, all those things. And by forming a tribe, you can pull your capital, you can pull your network, you can pull your resources, and now participate in things that you never dreamed of. And uh, so that includes real estate, but it also includes uh, franchises. A lot of tri uh, tribes are, are actually doing more turnkey uh, franchises. Uh, you mentioned uh, racehorses. Uh, that, that's also kind of this recreational asset. Uh, people are, are investing in dream experiences, uh, which may or may not include an asset, but may, may take a big amount of capital to, to achieve. 
like a trip, uh, trip of a lifetime around the world. Um, really, it runs the gamut. There's some really exciting different things out there. But again, the primary use of TribeVest is to form an investor tribe and manage that investor tribe for, to, for uh, real estate investment. Yeah, and I think as a strategy, it's really interesting to invest as part of a group. What do you think, strategically speaking, what do you think are the benefits, and you touched on some of them, what are the benefits of investing as part of a, you know, part of a tribe or part of a group versus just you know, going out there, finding a house or finding multifamily and just buying them without being part of, of a tribe, part of a group? You know, I, I think... I'm, I was like, um, I am like a lot of your uh, audience, um, you know, kind of realized along the way that just no matter how good the job was or how good the paycheck was, it was just never going to afford the wealth and freedom and security that we all yearn for as, as humans. And I think like most people listening you know, we always saw real estate as a way to hack wealth without having to give up our, our day jobs and, and maybe living the dream that someday maybe we would give up our day, draw, day jobs uh, by investing in, in real estate. But, um, you know, what are the benefits of investing as a, as a tribe? Well, you know, to, to do it on your own, it's hard. You know, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. There's a huge learning curve that, goes into this if you're doing it on your own for the first time. Not to mention, you know, the biggest barrier of entry for most of us is capital. So, um, you know, you'll hear me reference my my brothers and I's tribe, which is kind of the origin tribe. Um, You know, we had good jobs, but we didn't have lump sums of money. And, uh, And therefore, on our own, it was really hard to start to participate in the real estate market. And then, you know, the other thing, Ellie, is it takes guts, you know, to to put your hard-earned money into something that you're not an expert in. And if you're lucky, you're networking with people like you or, you know, that, you know, give you confidence and bring that expertise. But if you don't have that, it really is this, you know, trial by um, error. And, um, And so... You know what does a tr- uh, investment tribe bring? It ma- it brings uh, that ability to to pull capital. Number one, uh, two, it, it gives you the ability to leverage your network. Uh, so finding people like like Ellie and others that are in that business, so your network expands. Uh, it also uh, brings your collective know-how. So alone, we didn't really know how to invest in things, but together we would figure it out. And, um, and just, just having that confidence and support in one, of other, one another to, to do a deal that we wouldn't do on our own. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming that when you're investing as part of a group, either on TriVest or anywhere else, you kind of lose some of the control, right? So you, you're not the only investor. So you have other investor, uh, other investors, other partners, how do you bypass that, that issue um, that, you know, you're giving up some control and who is actually making the decision and how, oh, actually, let's stop here because I, I have so many uh, other questions, of it, but j- let's just focus on those two questions. You know, who's making the decision and how can an investor make peace with the fact that they're not going to be the only decision makers yeah. in the investment. There, there's trade-offs to everything. And, um, you know, for people like, like me and my brothers and, and a lot of other people out there, it's the, the trade-offs um, of the benefits of an investor tribe far outweigh, you know, going it alone. But that being said, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that are going alone that, you know, should do it, do it on their own. Cause they do like that control. They feel empowered and, um, and they're kind of, you know, going, you know, doing it, uh, their, their own way. But there's a saying that, you know, um, gosh, now I'm drawing a blank who said it, but it's, you know, if you want to go fast, go it alone. And if you want to go far, uh, go together. 
And um, so anyway, that's, that's a little bit of the trade-off that you really have to think about. Uh, but in terms of like, how, how does that manage? Okay, so we're forming a tribe and, um, you know, who gets to make the decisions? And I also just want to point out one other thing. You know, you mentioned whether you're on TribeVest or not on TribeVest with an investor tribe, you know, doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we didn't invent investor tribes by any means. Uh, people have been coming together to do more than they would on their own for a long time, particularly in real estate. Um, so, you know, investor tribes have been around for hundreds, arguably thousands of years. Uh, but TribeVest is the first platform where all the members of an investor tribe can come in and see a single pane of glass dashboard and form and align and manage and vote and all those things. So, uh, but generically speaking, you know, what are the rules of, of, of an investor group? And I think, you know, you raise up the most important thing. When, when my brothers and I formed our investor tribe 13 years ago, um, the first thing we wanted to do was get over our capital, lack of capital problem. And so we started to do, do $500 a month, right, to do that. And that was between four of us. And that was $2,000 a month, $24,000 a year. One investment turned into another, turned into another. And uh, a few years ago, people started to ask us, wait a minute, how are you investing in all these things? And we told them about tribe investing. And they said, wait a minute, I have a tribe that, um, you know, with shared financial goals, can you help us form, form an investor tribe too? And that was really when the idea was sparked. But we really had to think, Ellie, about, you know, what, um, what would we have done differently? And the truth is, we would have done a lot of things differently. Um, and, and one of those things is just aligning, aligning on the mission, aligning on uh, the, the, the assets that you're going to invest in, aligning on how much capital and, and what's the timeline of this, um, you know, aligning on what are each of our roles and what are the rules, how, what are the terms mm -hmm. and how, we, how and when are we going to exit. And all those are things that most investor groups go into and they don't even talk about. And so part of the platform is all about alignment. And, um, and in terms of how people make decisions, it's up to them, but they will discuss it up front. And all of them have some kind of voting component. So they are LLCs, uh, they are partnerships, which is, a, uh, you know, which is a great entity to do this, but in order to, 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 to stay in this kind of own business ownership asset class, which is important, and you can't be a passive investor in it. And so to be an active investor, you have to have a vote. Mm -hmm. And so our platform gives everybody a vote. Now you can nominate who's the president, who's taking charge, and giving them all sorts of control to get the deal done. But at the end of the day, major decisions uh, will be voted on by on average, you know, four to seven partners within the investor group. Got it. So basically the tribe is choosing the decision makers, the, the person who's going to manage the asset. And, and then some of the decisions are being made by the entire group, basically similar to board of directors and a CEO of a company in, in a way. So the CEO is managing the day-to-day -day operations. And then when it comes to, you know, selling the, company or doing anything radical that, you know, changes, for instance, the strategy significantly or the direction or the brand of the company, then maybe then you need the vote from the board of directors that have a say in what's happening. Ellie, that's a great uh, example and, you know, metaphor. And it's, it's not even a metaphor. That's really how, how, how it, it, is. it mm -hmm. operates. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, really important piece of that. And uh, again, like the person that has maybe a little more sweat equity into it, you know, that would be discussed and agreed upon in terms of ownership and mm -hmm. cap table, capitalization table of the business. Um, or, you know, maybe it's just all pro rata. Whatever you put in is the proportion that you own of each of the investments that that entity owns too. And there's lots of tribes like that. And each tribe basically has their own rules about what's the minimum investment. 
So I'm assuming there's going to be someone that's going to bring a deal and it's probably through your company. There's a deal. And then what would be, what would you say be the lowest amount, you know, kind of if someone doesn't have a lot of money and they say, you know what, I don't have millions of dollars to buy multifamily. Maybe I don't even have $50,000 to participate in a syndication, but I have something and I would like to, you know, have my money work for me, put my money to work what would be the minimum investment? Well, you know, probably the minimum investment out there that we've seen where people are really coming together is around the $25,000 mark. So to participate in some syndicates, that's maybe the minimum investment. Mm -hmm. It's usually closer to 50. And if you're buying a single family, depending on where you are in the Midwest, you could buy a single family, uh, you know, uh, cash flowing property for a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So the down payment, you know, might be thirty or forty thousand dollars for something like that. Uh, but you know, to to your question, is I don't have that twenty five thousand dollars to get in past that threshold, or I don't want to put twenty five thousand dollars in to get to that. But would I be willing to join a group with five of us and put five thousand dollars in? and continue to do that. The other thing that we see a lot of is I might have $100,000 to invest in different syndicates or different deals throughout a year, um, but that only gets me into two or three deals, right? And if I, did, if I did it with my tribe, maybe I get into six deals. Maybe I get into 10 deals, and I don't have to say no to deals I really like because I don't have the capital. So that's the other way that, um, you know, not only just getting to the first one for my brothers and I, it really was like, how do we get our first deal? How do we get that first $25,000? And, um, and, but for others, it's, wait a minute, I'm already doing deals, but I'd like to do more. I'd like to, and I'd, and I'd like to up my risk tolerance. And I wouldn't do that unless I was doing this as a tribe. Um, and then one, one other thing, Ellie, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to bring it up, but like one of the big benefits here that the, the platform does is this idea of manageable monthly contributions. So when I say like my asset class that I invest in is my investor tribe, I mean it. And a lot of times we don't even have the deal picked out yet. It's all about like, well, let's all put in $5,000 and now we have $50,000 between 10 of us, and let's wait and go out and see what the market does. Mm -hmm. Um, Or what we could do is we could do $500 a month. We could do $1,000 a month each. And that's what a lot of these tribes are doing. And they're doing that for over four years time. And if you add that up, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars that add up to half a dozen, a dozen different deals over that time. So that manageable monthly contribution, that auto capital call, if you will, is really a cool tool. Interesting. And Travis, what would be your recommendation for someone who is looking to choose a group to investing? What are the common mistake you've seen investors do? Yeah, um, I did them. Uh, So... The, I think if someone's looking to find an investor group, I think the first thing is, is you know, find people that are aligned with you. Um, you know, I think a lot of people come to try best thinking that they're individual and they just want to enjoy, uh, join an investor group of people they don't already know, of people they don't know. And that does happen from time to time. But, you know, really leverage the most valuable asset or resource you have in your network. And that's, that's your relationships. And you know who, who thinks like you, who is in a similar situation with capital and, you know, an interest in investing in real estate and start there. And, um, but it's also important that you go through an alignment process. So, you know, for example, try best, gives the founder, as we call them, the person that initiates it, this ability to come in and kind of paint this picture of what this investor tribe is. 
And these are the things we're going to invest in. This is how much capital, this is how we'll get the deal done. And that gets presented to these prospective tribe members where they discuss it, they think about it, and then ultimately they vote on an operating agreement and they go through this alignment process. So more important than the rules are the rules up front and TribeVest makes you do that. So the biggest mistake we see are, are people that think that they don't need an operating agreement uh, because they're, they're so close with their, their, these people and they trust each other and everything else. The irony is, is that's the exact reason why you need an operating agreement, right? Because you love these people or you really like them or you really value them. That's ex you want to take the emotion. We, mi we mitigate emotion through data, through um, collaboration, through agreeing up front. It's not, what, you know, what are we going to do now? It's, you know, we've, we've, it's, well, what do we do? Well, let's just go back and look at how did we agree that we would uh, deal with this issue when it comes up, because it will. And so when you have that to fall back on, Mm -hmm. there's no emotion. You already know how to handle, handle things. So. Yeah, absolutely. And Travis, I want to talk a little bit about the process. So what does the process look like for someone who wants to invest in a tribe or invest with a group of other investors and together own, you know, an investment, a property, a company, whatever it is. Yeah. So two, two kind of, typical scenarios we see. One is we have a deal, right? Uh, we have a deal and we want to form a, a, a tribe to get the deal done. So in that case, they're coming to Tribe Best with the deal already picked out. Um, you know, they have a, a single family around the corner from them and it's a group of neighbors that want to go in on this deal. Maybe it's a family that's buying a vacation home that they also want to do an Airbnb on, or they're working with someone that does um, uh, multifamily and they want to come in as a passive investor, but they found the deal. And, um, and so they, they think that the hard work's done, right? They think that the hard work is done, that they found the deal, which is, which is true. But if you're doing it as an investor group, you really need to now come in, online, um, uh, put your operating agreement in place. And then again, on the platform, Ellie, is you can, you can file your LLC in all 50 states. Um, you get your EIN. Um, we have, we're connected to an FDIC insured uh, business bank. So you can open up your business bank account all online with your partners. And, and then you can set up your automatic capital contributions either on a monthly basis or on a lump sum basis. And, and then you're in business. It's official and you can wire that money. You can, you can uh, you know, write a check or however that deal is going to get done. But there's definitely a, that, that process. So that's the, that's the tribe that comes in with a deal already. And then there's tribes that like my brothers and I, we knew generally that we wanted to invest in real estate, but we didn't know in what type or how. Uh, but we knew f first and foremost, we needed to overcome the lack of capital. So we came in without a deal in mind and aligned, formed, um, funded the, the entity. And then once we had enough capital, then we went out and found the deal. Got it. Well, I think we have arrived to the lightning round questions phase. Are you ready, Travis? Let's do it. All right. So, Travis, what do you do for fun? What's your favorite hobby? My favorite hobby is fishing with my brothers. And uh, we go on a pretty extravagant trip that we usually can't afford. Uh, but we've been to Patagonia, Montana, New Zealand, and it's a little bit of a splurge, but it's awesome. Sounds dreamy. Uh, what's the one thing that people don't know about you? I think just how hard I uh, how how hard I work to get to where I am, 
and how many times I've failed. And, um, and that makes, makes me humble. So I think people pick up, I'm a pretty humble guy, but um, most people have no idea <clears throat> how many times I had to fail to become successful. Mm -hmm. um, and then what do you wish you had known when you first started investing? What do I, what do I wish I would have known? Um, I think I, you know, especially coming from the traditional finance and, and, you know, Wall Street market, um, I wanted things to be more black and white. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted, I wanted clear cut answers and uh, didn't want to know about the nuances or the other variables. And, you know, what I learned eventually is that owning real estate is a business. It is a business. Oh, it has yeah. moving parts. And that's a good thing because now you have different variables to levers to pull and knobs to turn and everything else. So it took me a while to kind of appreciate how awesome of an asset class and which makes it safe and fun and, you know, fulfilling. Uh, so I wish I would have known that that was true early on. Very nice. Um, and then lastly, what's your number one advice to investors who want to scale their, their business, their portfolio? What would you say would be the number one advice? My number one advice is always start, um, you know, start, Start whatever you're thinking in terms of scaling, whether it's that first one or you want to go from 50 to 100 or whatever it is, start. And I would suggest that a great way to scale and to get into new areas of the market um, and uncover new deals would be to, to think a little bit bigger than your own business and your own investment power. And a nice way to do that is to bring in people that you know, like, and trust and form an investor mm -hmm. tribe. It's amazing once you put your capital together and you're investing in things that you wouldn't have or couldn't have on your own, a whole new world presents itself. So yeah, start and do it as a tribe. It's way more fun. Absolutely. All right, Travis, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. If one of our listeners want to get in touch with you. Where can they find you? Absolutely. Tribevest.com. Uh, please, you know, come and register. And then I'll just, I'd also like to offer this. Um, please uh, reach out to our, our tribe guide once you've registered or even contact me on the contact us page and mention Ellie's show. And I would love to give anybody that's listening to this, uh, three free months of a concierge service on our platform. So that basically means that you have a tribe guide there to answer all your questions about tribe investing. We'll even participate on meetings with uh, you and your tribe as you get things going. So really uh, nice, valuable um, offer there that again, I'd love to offer anybody that uh, is listening to this on your show and just mention Ellie's show. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Travis. Again, I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope to catch up with you at some point. Oh, I can't wait to be back out in sunny Southern California before <laughs> long. All right. Take care, Travis. Take care. Thanks. Thanks.